Welcome to another video from Guilao 60. This is uh, number three of the Meng Wanzhou uh, four-part series. And, uh, you know, I'm going to start this one off a little bit differently. Uh, Luca Maestri. I'm probably slaying that word. Or Tim Cook. If you don't know who they are, Luca is the CFO, the Chief Financial Officer of Apple. And Tim Cook is the CEO. So, uh, these guys are pretty big in the Apple uh, world. Okay, why do I bring these people up? Okay, well, here, let's put the, f the shoe on the other foot today. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm in a park here. It's pretty nice. It's, it's warm. It's like, it's in December and it's still warm outside. Anyway, I digress. Back, back to the story. Say, say Luca, uh, because he's the chief financial officer of Apple. And he oversees all of the financial uh, operations and, and uh, you know, he's the guy that's responsible for everything like that. What if Apple, and I'm not saying that Apple did, but what if Apple or one of its uh, shell companies helped sponsor somebody like uh, Jimmy Lay or Joshua Wong in, in Hong Kong? They would be... guilty of a charge in China. Sedition. Okay, and uh, everybody knows that they just brought in the Security Act into Hong Kong here not too long ago, and uh, the sedition part, well, all of it is, uh, is worldwide. So if you get caught, if you're in the United States, or if you're in Europe, if you're in Italy, and uh, you promote sedition of Hong Kong away from China, then you are guilty in China for that crime. As, you know, you'd, you'd uh, end up in court and you'd get to, to say your piece type thing and uh, defend yourself. But uh, you know what I mean. And uh, say somebody in Hong Kong, the Jimmy Lay or the Joshua Wong, uh, because they wanted preferential treatment from the Chinese government, uh, they make an affidavit to that effect that Luca or Apple did, but Luca is responsible. So then the Chinese government puts out a warrant for Luca's arrest. Okay, this is all hypothetical, putting the shoe on the other foot. You know what I mean. Well, then Luca and his, and his family, they say, well, you know, Italy sort of sucks this time of the year in the winter time, so let's go to Thailand for a vacation. Yes, so they all get on an airplane and they head for Thailand. Bang, gets to the Thai, Thailand, to Bangkok airport, or one of the Bangkok airports, they got a couple of them. And lo and behold, uh, the Border Services Agency in Thailand takes Luca aside and interrogates him, searches him, seizes all of his stuff, his cell phones, everything, demands passwords for those cell phones, and then turns it over to the Thai police that arrest him, oh, after three hours of interrogation for sure, and arrest him. And uh, because they have uh, an extradition request from China and yes Thailand and China have an extradition treaty you, you know where I'm going with this guys you, you, you know you, you guys uh, weren't born yesterday so then Lucas sit, sits in uh, Thailand for two years well, I guess Thailand's pretty nice for, for a couple years but uh, uh, you know fighting against an extradition request to China just because of uh, an affidavit that was signed by some jaboni and some company that wants preferential treatment like HSBC Bank wants with the United States. Why do they want preferential treatment? Swift codes? You gotta be friends with, the, with uh, the United States because they hold the international card, the Swift code card, and uh, without them, you're pooched as a bank. So, you know what I mean? What's good for the goose is good for the gander. If, if, if you want to bring politics into companies having to do business around the world, what would make it different if China did exactly the same thing as what you guys in the United States and Canada are doing to Meng Wanzhou? Because that, the scenario is basically just reversed and uh, it, it, 
and it and it is a real threat. If uh, if it's good for the United States to do something like this through Canada, then why isn't it good for China to do that against somebody from the United States using Thailand as a third party? And uh, you think, well, it's different. Well, no. You see, the United States has the power over Canada. Over 75% of our exports go to the United States of America. Yes, yeah, so uh, if the United States got pissed off at Canada, uh, they could economically ruin Canada. And Canada knows that. So when they get a request from the United States, they take it freaking seriously. And you know, Trudeau is shit ass scared of Trump. So, uh, you know, the idea that they have that economic uh, power over Canada is, is, uh, is threatening. For, for, for a country like Canada. But you know what? China has that same economic power over Thailand because most 60 some percent of all of the tourists that go into Thailand and their, their whole economy is based on, on, uh, on tourism comes from China. So China wields an economic power over Thailand that could devastate the Thai economy in a frickin' heartbeat if they said, like they did with South Korea, we're not going there anymore. Everybody pulls out, uh, no Chinese tourists, no money for the Thai, and you know what I mean? So it is a, a, a viable thing that, that could actually happen if China would stoop as low as the United States has done in the Meng Wanzhou case, and Canada has done in the Meng Wanzhou case. And you're probably thinking, how dare China make laws that, that uh, are well, cover the entire world. But that's exactly what the United States did. So, you know, the idea of this, this uh, new law that came into Hong Kong, covering everywhere in, uh, in the world, is uh, the same thing as what the United States has done with sanctions against Iran. They don't like Iran. They haven't liked Iran since about 50 years ago when they had the hostage, the Iranian hostage situation and uh, you know the Canadians come and bailed them out of that one too. It's the Trump era trying to undo everything that Obama did in his his eight years in as president Trump is trying to erase all of that. And this is where this Iranian thing comes from. So how dare the United States make sanctions against Iran that cover everybody in the whole world. So if you, as a person, don't do exactly what the Americans say that you should do when you're dealing with Iran, um, they can arrest your ass and extradite you to the United States. And you don't have the funds to fight like Meng Wanzhou did. I'm actually starting to wonder if this is a new era of competition uh, countries using their Department of Justice uh, as a policing arm to police the competition and uh, the, the, the players in big business around the world. Uh, I know that there's companies that don't let their executives travel to the United States now because they're scared that they will be arbitrarily detained, charged, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Using your Department of Justice to uh, strong arm businesses around the world to get what you want. You know, and this isn't the first time. There was uh, Frederick Perusi, I think I'm slaying that name, from Alstom. Uh, it's, a, it's a French company. He was arrested in the United States and uh, because they're a big competition with General Electric. So they, they've done this before. It's basically exactly what they did, to, did with Meng Wanzhou, using the Department of Justice to attack people in a company, high up executives in a company, to threaten them, to, to uh, uh, scare the living bejesus out of them so that they can compete in the real world with these foreign companies. So Alstom, uh, after uh, the dust settled, General Electric actually absorbed Alstom, a French company. And uh, as soon as that happened, Frederick was released. Oh, well, now it's okay. So they actually used the kidnapping of this French executive to strong arm that company into being absorbed by General Electric. Sure, uh, they're not going to be able to absorb uh, Huawei. 
that's just not going to happen. It's just too big. It's the largest tech uh, company in the world type thing. But they're using this to manipulate, intimidate uh, Huawei and uh, the Huawei owner because it's his daughter. Uh, so you can see what's going on here and, and everybody around the world they're not blind they see what's going on and it's basically Trumponomics I guess one of the major uh, questions is are executives from foreign companies targets targeted by the American government so that the American businesses can compete with these foreign companies and you know it's getting to the point where executives from foreign companies have no go zones it's basically the same as like gangs uh, your your ms-13 or your crips or your bloods or you know what i mean like you can't go to this place or you can't go to this country you can't deal with these people because if you do the american government will arrest you hold you find you guilty and stick your ass in jail for the rest of your life you know what I mean so so you can't go there you can't go to the United States it's it's getting to the point where um, globalization means uh, countries have to compete with each other some of those countries are not playing fair uh, and the United States is definitely one of those countries that is not playing fair. Uh, if they can use their Department of Justice to attack executives of these companies, to intimidate them so that they can't compete on a level playing field, then it's not a level playing field. And I think that's exactly what you're seeing here. Um, and. Uh, I'm going to stop it here now because the next video that I get into is going to be uh, the plea deal of Meng Wanzhou. Yes, and uh, the American uh, government has requested, and they don't do this because they're winning. They do it because they're losing. I spent 25 years in court, guys. I've seen it all. And uh, not once, not once did I see somebody that was willing to cut a deal that thought they were going to win. So anyway, that's what's coming up in the next video. Uh, be there, be square. Oh, and that's another video from Grey Loud 60. If you like this video, as always, like, comment, subscribe, push that share button. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to resubscribe, hit the bell. You know the score. Oh, and uh, never forget, put a couple bucks on the children's Patreon account. It's for a good cause. Thanks for watching. Bye now.